And I know what you're all thinking. So I've heard about websites, I've heard about website technology, I've heard about SEO, I've heard about digital media, I've heard about Google's latest trends and technologies, but when is somebody going to finally talk about analytics? Well, the good news is here I am. I'm here to talk about analytics. And this one's for you, Eric. As the C-type personality that I am, um, I love to measure things. Analytics has been a passion of mine for a very long time, um, for 10 years, in fact. And Surprisingly enough, though, one of the things that uh, shocked me, quite honestly, when I was doing research for this presentation, is that despite the fact that analytics has been around for such a long time, as late as last year, according to Salesforce, only one third of chief marketing officers actually used analytics to measure their performance. That means that nearly 70% of chief marketing officers are essentially using gut feel to make decisions. When you look at that from a B2B versus a B2B perspective, the data looks even worse. While almost half of B2B companies are using marketing analytics, only about a quarter of B2C companies are using marketing analytics. So what's the problem? Well, before we get to why marketing analytics can be so challenging, it's also important to know that uh, marketing analytics basically comes down to a need for information. We've actually heard some comments here today from the previous presentations about how you measure performance. How do you know whether what you're doing is correct or not? 40% um, of marketers are able to measure uh, return investment according to Forbes in 2016. Now, on the other hand, 40% of marketers also say that calculating ROI is by far and away their biggest challenge. So on the one hand, the ones that are, seem to be using marketing analytics are able to calculate ROI. The ones that don't want to desperately calculate it but don't know how. And it turns out that if you can measure return on investment, you actually have a 1.6 times greater likelihood of getting a bigger budget than if you don't. Now, that kind of seems obvious because if I can convince an eel that a campaign was successful, there's a higher likelihood he's going to give me more money to spend next year on that same campaign. And I see a few heads nodding, but what's the problem then? Why is, uh, you know, before we get to the problem of marketing analytics, what is the benefit to the marketer for marketing analytics? Well, first and foremost, and any BI person will use this uh, analogy, it's probably one of the most famous statements from business intelligence, one version of the truth. One of the single biggest challenges with doing analytics the old-fashioned way on a spreadsheet is that the moment that spreadsheet leaves your computer, that information is no longer accurate. Because now that next person that got that spreadsheet made one change to it, they added a column, they insert a row, they changed some formatting, they accidentally changed the cell without knowing it, and all of a sudden that information is no longer accurate when it gets to the next recipient. The second important benefit to marketing analytics is that it improves data knowledge and security. So through a unified information distribution architecture, by having the same visual information for everybody, not only do you make every get everybody on the same page, because they're all looking at the same piece of information the same way, but it also makes it easier to know who's looking at the information. Because after all, you're giving them access to the analytics platform. It's not just a spreadsheet out in the cloud that you're hoping doesn't get forwarded accidentally to your biggest competitor, because the guy was actually trying to forward the email about the party that they're all going to next week, but he stuck the spreadsheet with the budget inside of it instead. And, you know, I, I've seen it happen. Um, third, faster time to knowledge. Anybody who's ever opened a spreadsheet and struggled with, it's not loading, I can't get it to look right, I don't know how to work with pivot tables, knows that working with spreadsheets can be a very time-consuming and frustrating experience. Less workload on your marketing staff. If you have marketing people doing marketing analytics and manually crunching through numbers, I know that you've heard the groans of your marketing staff looking at you saying, really? I've got to spend a week crunching through numbers and getting data out of Facebook, getting data out of uh, Google, getting data out of all of my paid campaigns to put all this together for a spreadsheet when I could be doing my job, because my job isn't to put numbers together. And then finally, better insights. Because when you switch to an analytics platform, you're actually going to be able to consume data the way the human brain was designed to consume it, in a visual pattern rather than having to look at numbers. Not everybody loves to stare at numbers like I do. Most people actually hate it. So what's the challenge? What's the problem? Why are people having such a tough time with marketing analytics? Well, it turns out that there are four big roadblocks to doing marketing analytics correctly. The first one is data sources. Unlike just about any part of the organization, marketing has by far and away access to more data sources than just about anybody else in the organization. Twitter, Facebook, uh, other forms of social media, just in social media alone, you're dealing with tens, dozens of potential data sources. Uh, display advertising, PPC, your website, and the data sources 
have no common structure. So it's not like you can say, well, they all lose the same common structure, they all look the same, they all have the same fields, relatively easy to dump them all on a spreadsheet to make them all look the same. You're talking about weeks worth of work to get all that to work. And even when you make the template to make it all work correctly, somebody like Facebook or Google changes a field on you and now you gotta fix the template all over again. The third one is different time intervals. On certain platforms, things matter on a second by second basis because things are happening in real time. On other platforms like your website, looking at things on a second by second basis is insanity unless you're running a business that requires it to look at on a second by second basis. So having a uniform time interval can be very challenging. And then finally, especially for a marketer, one of the biggest frustrations is if I need to measure return on investment, I need revenue information. Oftentimes that's not as easily accessed as people may think. Right? So you have to have all of these problems solved before you can make marketing analytics work for you. Well, making that work looks a little bit like the slide that you see here. And it's a lot to take in. This is actually a fairly simplified version of the process that Milestone uses behind Milestone Analytics, our very own marketing analytics platform. Um, it basically involves setting up connections to all your various data sources, normalizing all that, those data sources, mapping them to a common structure, testing to make sure that we're doing everything correctly, that there's no problems, validating the data that's coming through and the reports that are being generated to make sure that we're giving our customers concise and accurate information, and then repeating the whole process over and over again. A more simplified way of looking at this is to basically think about it from the perspective of, on the left-hand side there are the various data sources that we have access to, whether it's your website, media spend, uh, your local data, uh, reviews, social media, data from your website that's coming in, revenue information. We consolidate all of that information, we normalize it, and we then map it to a customer journey to give you a sense of how you're spending your money. So, at this point, fairly straightforward, right? Well, it turns out, and this is by far and away in my experience, one of the biggest challenges of deploying analytics successfully, and where most people tend to fail, uh, little statistics that I, a statistic that I debated throwing into the slideshow, even as late as last year, 80% of business intelligence deployments fail. It is by far and away the largest uh, failure rate of any enterprise software that's sold in the market. This is the reason why because the vast majority of companies that deploy analytics don't think through the, market, the reporting personas that they're deploying analytics for. They deploy analytics with an assumption that everybody's going to be looking at the same dashboard. Everybody's going to look at the same reports. The problem is different people and different types of organizations consume data differently, they have different kinds of needs, they have different kinds of requirements. So it's very important that you tailor how you present the information, how you present analytics to the individual needs of your organization and to the individual needs of the profile of the person that's consuming that information. So let's walk through each one of these profiles. First up is the e-commerce manager. This is a screenshot from Milestone Analytics, our very own analytics platform, and we started down here at the level of the e-commerce manager. That was the first customer profile that we sort of went after. Their job is to basically, if you'll pardon the expression, be in the weeds. They're down there looking and turning the knobs. They're making sure that things are happening correctly at the individual campaign level. They're making sure that when something happens on Facebook that they react to it instantaneously. They're making sure that when keyword rankings change that something happens to change those keyword rankings right away. As an executive, do you really have the time to pay that much attention to how your keyword rankings change from one day to the next? Probably not. So this type of a dashboard isn't going to be that useful to you. From an e-commerce perspective, you also want to look at competitive benchmarking. As an executive, you may care about competitors, but you're not going to care about things like whether your specific KPIs that you have are different than the KPIs of your competitor. That's somebody else's job in the organization. Again, that e-commerce manager is the person who needs to look at this information, needs to be aware of it and stay on top of it and react to it. From a marketer's perspective, if you're talking about the person that's actually managing the campaigns, that's actually managing the budget, your job, now my job, if I was managing this, my job is to look at how we're doing as an organization, how I'm spending my money and how that money is being allocated across all of the various types of campaigns that I can run. So what, how am I optimizing my marketing spend? In this particular case, if I click down on awareness and I drill down, I can see that paid search, organic, and social are by far and away the things that tend to get most of the traffic that I need uh, for awareness. And if I look down at social and I see Facebook and Twitter and I, have, I can hover over them, this is not a demo so I can't show you, but 
I can hover over them and see the percentage allocation. I can now look at that and compare that to my marketing spend and decide if I'm spending twice as much on Twitter ad as I am on Facebook, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I need to optimize my marketing spend. Again, is that something that the CEO of the company is going to really get that deep into? No, but I guarantee you the marketing guy is, right? So you have to have the right level of depth for the right person. Okay, so what about the executive? From an executive's perspective, and this is sort of a, a bit of a snapshot of things to come in, marketing, in our marketing analytics platform. Um, as an executive, you care about things like how much traffic are we getting on our website? You care about things like how many leads are we getting? Are we getting group leads? Are we getting phone leads? Are they converting into actual sales? Are we actually booking rooms? Are we selling things on the website? Are we getting people to come into the branches of our uh, local banks? So I worry more about the big numbers, the big picture information, so I can then have the conversation with the marketing people that say, hey, our conversions are not happening correctly, or maybe our leads are not at the level that we need them to be at. So it's an executive dashboard aimed at the person that's looking at the bigger picture. Now, this particular dashboard, uh, this sort of scorecard approach, this is geared more towards a very particular type of consumer that we've identified, which is very specific to the hospitality industry, where you're essentially looking at multi-group uh, or multi-level uh, properties. So I have uh, a dashboard, a scorecard that talks about all of the properties that are particular brands, uh, various key performance indicators for each one of them, and I have a bird's eye view of how I'm comparing across all the multiple properties that this particular company may have and may be managing and all the brands that I'm working with. Again, giving me as a brand manager, giving me as the person that's responsible for all of these various independent properties, uh, the ability to see that organic view, that sort of overarching view of my entire business, right? So not having to make that determination based on looking at the dashboard that I had, uh, that the marketer was looking at, but looking at a dashboard that is specific to me. Finally, the enterprise. At the enterprise level, now you're talking about a sophisticated dashboard that provides a lot of drill down capabilities. Now you're talking about a dashboard that's ideally aimed really at the analysts in your organization. You're talking about dashboards that um, allow filtering, advanced visuals, that allow multi-dimensional analysis where you can go down in much deeper, greater lengths and depth because you have the data, you have the infrastructure that you need to support it. Uh, and this is also something that we're doing on a fairly select basis with some of our larger enterprise customers. So really the point is being able to look at your marketing analytics from the perspective of the person that's going to consume the information. By far and away, that's the biggest point that I wanted to bring across. So what's next for marketing analytics? Where is it going from a um, long-term perspective? By far and away, probably the most interesting and most useful, especially for our audience, um, advancement in technology is what's known as prescript prescriptive analytics, which is easier said than done, uh, or other way around. Actually, it's probably easier done than said, as difficult as it may be. Um, and here, the idea is basically to provide not just analysis of how you're doing, but provide recommendations of where to go next, how to optimize campaigns, how to uh, get better results on your investment based on what you're looking at. Very, very sophisticated type of technology, very, very user specific. Uh, this is going to get even more granular from a user profile and a customer perspective. Uh, something that we're doing a lot of research in right now. Uh, not ready to really talk about it just yet because we're still in the very early stages, but this is where marketing analytics is headed. Um, and beyond just digital marketing, the entire world of analytics is moving towards prescriptive, prescriptive analytics. So to wrap it up, Digital marketing analytics, uh, what are some of the key takeaways? The first one is that despite the fact that, you know, it may not necessarily be the sexiest topic in the room, digital marketing analytics does pay off. You know, one of the oldest adages in the BI industry is you can't change that which you do not measure. Um, and the one time that you should listen to your C guys is when they're telling you, look, if you're not measuring it, odds are, you know, we're not gonna be able to make any changes to it. Um, the second thing to remember is, it doesn't have to be hard, and it doesn't have to. The only time marketing analytics, especially digital marketing analytics, becomes hard is if you choose to take the task of creating it onto your own shoulders. 
because creating these dashboards, creating these data integrations, creating those connections, that's the hard part about marketing analytics. The hard part is not the consumption, it's not using the information, it's creating the infrastructure. So whether it's Milestone or it's somebody else, go find partners that have the ability to create the infrastructure and maintain that infrastructure. Because the other part that's important to remember that I learned over the course of 10 years, it's one thing to set up all of the data integration and ETL processes. It's something completely different to maintain them every time these guys change stuff in the background. And if you think they're gonna give you advance warning that they're about to change things, I got bad news for you. You're gonna find out when you make a decision based on bad data because your dashboard is still based on old maps and the maps need to be changed, right? Last thing, and this is probably the single biggest takeaway, if you're going to invest in marketing analytics, think about reporting personas. Sit down and think about who are all of the constituents that absolutely have to have access to analytics in my organization. What kind of analytics do they need? Does my partner have access to the right information so that I can present the information in the level of granularity that that particular individual needs to get their job done right? Because at the end of the day, if marketing analytics is going to do its job for you, first and foremost, it needs to make the job of the people that are using it easier. If it's not doing that, then you probably shouldn't be using it.